Hello and welcome everyone to the uh, July uh, training class for the uh, I2B2 Transmart Foundation training program. Uh, my name is Rudy Potenzone. Uh, I'm with the foundation uh, and um, we bring you a monthly training class uh, on different topics. These classes are all donated by a number of our uh, members who are very active with the foundation. And today, Yulia Skofpen from the Rancho will be uh, presenting the training class. Uh, this is a program that uh, runs through the year. Each month, we have a training class on different topics. We do record these, and these will may be made available uh, in a couple of days, and you'll be able to review uh, the recordings, um, as well as all the other classes that have taken place this year. Uh, as I mentioned, it's, a, it's a, a program that runs for the entire year. We have this year uh, a number of interesting classes uh, besides the introductions to Transmart. Uh, there are classes oops, like this one that covers uh, advanced training topics, uh, classes on loading your data, and also on uh, programming uh, in the Transmart environment. Uh, and then there are also classes that uh, cover um, data loading. So uh, there are a number of classes remaining yet this year. Uh, the ones that have taken place are also recorded and uh, you'll be able to see those uh, on our site. Um, we are using GoToMeeting, uh, GoToWebinar, and so um, all of you are in mute mode, uh, but if you want to get our attention, you can um, raise your hand using the dashboard. You can type a question into the question window, or you can enter a, um, a comment into the chat window. I will be here for out, throughout the session and we'll be monitoring um, the, um, uh, the question windows. And so uh, if something comes up, I will try to break in and um, we'll get your questions answered. And there will definitely be time at the end um, to go through this. So uh, with that, I will turn it over to Yulia who will um, lead the, uh, the discussion. Yulia, you should be able to now take control of the screen. Okay, just one second. Yep. So, hello everyone. My name is Yulia Skopin. We'll talk about today uh, about loading of RNA seq data in Transmart. Do you see my presentation screen? Yes, looks good. Okay, thank you. So, today's agenda is um, so we'll talk about uh, curation of RNA-seq data for Transmart. We'll talk about loading of RNA-seq and mRNA-seq data. So I will refer you to a TM Data Loader wiki page. We'll talk about loading clinical data briefly, uh, mRNA-seq, RNA-seq data, loading of data with two and more platforms how to create custom platform. We'll talk about limitations of loading RNA-seq data in Transmart. I will show you RNA-seq, mRNA-seq data use case. And we will see how data uh, look in Transmart. Uh, longitudinal data visualization, advanced workflows, smart R, or create gene signature and use it. And if we'll have time, at the end, I will uh, talk about preparation of VCF data for Transmart, and I will check VCF data in Transmart as well. And I'm open to discussions and questions. So uh, when I was preparing this seminar, I was looking for information, more information at uh, Transmart Foundation website. So you can go check Transmart Project Wiki. You can find a lot of useful information about loading and uh, data samples and data types that um, are compatible with Transmart. And uh, it was also helpful to use this uh, source uh, on GitHub provided by Clarivate Analytics. And we have examples how to load uh, different types of data using TM data loader and specifically uh, RNA-seq and mRNA-seq uh, data. So I used a lot of information from uh, this uh, source in this presentation. So uh, I try to outline general notes about loading RNA-seq uh, data in Transmart. So general 
rule is the data must be normalized. So we can normally use RPKM data, FPKM, TPM, normalized counts, etc. Um, most workflows in Transmart work the same way as uh, the same way for gene expression and RNA seq data. Therefore, technically, RNA seq data can be loaded in Transmart as RNA seq or as expression because it uses the same um, uh, algorithm of calculations of these scores, for example. Transmart has a special table for mRNA seq data, but also can be loaded as RNA seq data. Platform file for RNA, as I say, platform file, <laughs> will have custom IDs or ensemble IDs, so which is transcript IDs mapped to gene symbols. I will show you example of platform file for RNA seq in this presentation. So platform file for MI RNA seq data requires mapping of mRNA probes to MR base ideas. You can find this information uh, uh, using this uh, link. Not normalized data or raw counts also can be loaded in Transmart and can be stored there as in a warehouse and later can be used by other tools and other applications. For example, you can you, you can load not normalized data in Transmart and you can export it in R using R API and analyze it in R and any other applications. So before you load data in Transmart, you think uh, what kind of loader you're going to use. So if you use TM data loader, Kettle or Transmart batch, um, all these three loaders will populate three columns in Transmart table. Columns uh, value, log, log2, and z-score. But keep in mind that these loaders uh, have um, different algorithms of calculation of z-scores. For example, TM data loader and Kettle use this formula with median log2 value and uh, Transmart batch using mean um, uh, in, in the formula of this core. In Transmart, uh, files or data uh, with label R or raw data means that data to be loaded in value column. R is normalized data without log transformation. R will be converted to log 2 and then Z score in Transmart. So you will see uh, you, you can see how it uh, how data looks in Transmart just using export button. You can export data and see how data is loaded in Transmart if you don't want to go to into Transmart tables and look for information in there. So zero values will be dropped during loading uh, unless you add small value to this. So you add small small value, say uh, 0 0.001 and uh, this data will be preserved in Transmart. Normalized R data should not contain any negative values. So I selected a use case uh, for this uh, training. Uh, it's a geo study, GSE 78169 by Baron Gale et al. Uh, and integrative transcriptomics approach identifies MIR503 as a candidate master regulator of the estrogen response in MSCF, MCF7 breast cancer cells. So on the GEO website, you can expect, inspect this study and it's composed of two subseries. One subseries contain data, um, MIRNA-seq data, and we can check this data, if this data is normalized there. And uh, another subseries, contain subset with RNA-seq data, and it's again uh, normalized data. Low dimensional information about this study can be also uh, downloaded uh, from matrix file. So what this study is about? So this study is 
uh, about mRNA and RNA differential expression upon um, uh, upon stimulation of estrogen re receptors by estrogen. So estrogen receptor is an important biomarker of breast cancer severity and a common therapeutic target. So in this paper's authors uh, showed expression dynamics of RNAs and mRNAs in MCF7 breast cancer cells. And they revealed three primary expression trends such as transient, induced, and repressed, and we'll see it in the specific examples in TransSmart, how it look. Um, they found that MIR503 is the strongest regulator of estrogen response by suppression of ZNF217 gene and oncogene. MIR503 directly targets uh, this uh, gene and levels of MIR503 and ZNF217 associated with opposite outcomes in patients, um, such as high expression of ZNF217 with poor survival of patients and high expression of MIR503 um, with improved survival. And authors conclude that uh, MIR503 is a potent estrogen-induced tumor suppressor and a potential novel therapeutic. So um, once we interested in this topic and we would like to see how data looks in TransSmart and uh, check this hypothesis, we need to prepare this uh, data set for loading in TransSmart. So uh, in general, like uh, briefly, I, I will get through the procedure that was done in this paper. That MCF7 cells was uh, after cultivation for 72 others, hours were induced by estrogen. And uh, during a uh, certain timeline, samples of RNA and mRNA was collected and uh, quantified. So, so first we prepare clinical data for this data set and we check for a geo website series matrix file and I prepare two uh, clinical uh, data files and mapping file. So this is the mapping file. I use general transmart rules of mapping and two clinical files. So in this case, study don't have patients but have uh, cell culture. And the experiment with cell culture was repeated three times. Therefore, subject ideas for, for the study would be each repeat of the experiment, which is replicate two, replicate three, re rep replicate four. That's how they call, uh, authors call this uh, replicate in a geo. Two, three, and four. So, here is the clinical data, and here is the mapping file. So mRNA seq data is also prepared for Transmart. You can see example how it was prepared. So here is the platform file. Um, first three lines are metadata, and then IDRF, mRNA ID, platform name, organism. So this is all completed. And matrix file containing probes, probes IDs, and uh, sample IDs. Sample IDs must be unique in the sample mapping files. These are sample IDs. This horizontal first row is as a sample IDs. Again, we can see results of this experiment. And subject sample mapping file, again, we can you can check format later if you look at this. Uh, uh, slides uh, after, if you need, uh, if you need time to look how it was uh, mapped, and RNA seq data. Again, there is an example of platform file, um, matrix file, sample, sample IDs, first rows, transcript IDs. In this case, transcript IDs are. A customized uh, customized IDs which uh, represent 
gene, gene name uh, than pipe than uh, gene ID. So usually we, we can see here ensemble IDs, but authors already uh, mapped each probe to each particular gene. So it was easy to create a platform file. So this all data is organized into these folders, clinical data, mRNA seq data to upload, RNA seq data to upload, and put in the parent folder. And the parent folder contains name of, of the study which would like we would like to see in Transmart. So let's check how this study look in Transmart. Yeah, are, are there any questions at this point? Um, again, if you uh, you can raise your hand using the dashboard, you can type in a question or you can type a note in the chat window. And right now I don't see anything. So here is this study loaded at the Rancher instance. So we can see biomarker data, two major subfolders, and we can see mRNA seq data loaded and uh, RNA seq data. Clinical data is very um, basic here, just cell line, organism, uh, treatment intervals. So, uh, cell culture was treated with uh, estradiol. We can see treatment intervals here. And as I said, as a subject IDs, uh, these are only replicates. Uh, this experiment was re uh, was repeated three times, and each replicate uh, symbolizes a subject ID in this study. So, um, let's talk about limitations uh, of loading RNA seq data in Transmart. So, uh, what I found when I was loading this data, it was uh, I was not able to use gene signature with mRNA IDs in the current version of Transmart 16.2. Therefore, I was thinking uh, how we can avoid this limitation. And I found, I don't know, probably not best solution is to customize mRNA Transmart platform and leave only probes that I'm interested in. Um, <clears throat> for example, in this paper, uh, we have a list of genes that were studied and uh, that were presented in this study. And I'm just leaving in the platform file only those probes that I'm particularly interested in. And I can load this study as a separate data set or as additional node to the study. So once you loaded main study, you can create separate folder folder or and load it as a separate study as I did it or load it as an additional node uh, to the study. If you uh, if you would like to know how to load studies in Transmart, please check previous uh, Transmart Foundation <coughs> uh, seminars. We have at least two seminars about loading uh, of data in Transmart. So, so next, let's check results of this study. So authors name three primary expression trends, such as transient, induced, and repressed. So let's generate this, uh, these three plots. So we're going to use Smart R, go to line graph workflow. So this is RNA seq data. So I'm choosing RNA seq data, high dimensional nodes. And I need to select the biomarkers. Fox C1, TFF. One Z 
CNF217. Click Fetch Data and then Run Analysis and Create Plot. So now we can see three primary expression trends, transient, induced, and repressed which is nicely confirmed results of this paper. So SmartR is a very nice uh, tool. Uh, it's a feature of TransSmart 16.2, and uh, it's very interactive and allows you to change some parameters once you build the plot. Let's go to the next analysis. So mRNA expression response to estrogen stimulation. So this is, was a difficult part for me because as I said, I couldn't save gene signature uh, list for, uh, I could save, but I couldn't use it with uh, mRNA database. So therefore I loaded auxiliary data set here. And in this custom platform, I have only genes of interest here. So going back to comparison, and now I'm loading this study. Line graph workflow. Again, if I drag and drop whole high dimensional nodes on the high dimensional variables panel, um, not, not going to select any biomarker because I pre-selected all biomarkers when I was loading this auxiliary data set. Fetch data and I'm ready to create plot. So here I see results of all mRNA of interest in this study. And uh, we will see that expression of uh, MI RNA 503 is increases upon uh, estrogen stimulation. Next analysis I would like to show is, is hierarchical clustering. So in the paper, um, uh, authors clustered these mRNAs uh, and uh, showing expression response to estrogen stimulation. We can do it in advanced workflows and in smart R. Let's do first in advanced workflows. I'm checking my data set, going to advanced workflows, then select hierarchical clustering, select all High dimensional nodes. So I'm going to apply clustering by rows. Here. So it's done. We can see clusters of um, miRNAs. And actually, if we check and compare it with the results in the paper, uh, we can see that this clustering is almost identical to that was done in the paper. For example, this MIR503, MIR4243P. Uh, so these all preserved here. Let's do the same analysis in Smart R. So heat map workflow. Again, all high dimensional nodes. So uh, if you have uh, other formatted studies, you can, of course, use uh, other boxes uh, in this analysis. Check, please check seminar about Smart R um, and Transmart Foundation. Again, uh, I click fetch data. It will be processing all, all probes that I have in this uh, small subset. So we have initial information about these nodes. 
um, I'm not going to aggregate probes, so I skip this. And when you hit this tab run analysis, you can select um, you can select options. So I'm going to select uh, min and hit create plot. So now you can see results of this hierarchical clustering. And it is nice that each, uh, each cluster is interactive. You can see information about that. You can, um, you can change, uh, you can change options available here on the fly. You can select clustering method. And you can retrieve information about each probe by clicking on the probe and it will prompt to you prompt you to the EBI website. So let's go to the next workflow, which are potential MIR503 targets. And this is uh, RNA seq data analysis, and we can see that these genes were selected for uh, clustering. And I, I'm going to create gene signature using these genes here. Are there any questions so far? Uh, I don't see any that are posted, but if anybody has a question, please put it in now. Yeah, we can leave some time for discussion. Sure. Probably at the end. So uh, we have an option to create gene signature. So you should go to this um, menu. So here you can, you can see what kind of gene signature we already created. And if you want to select, and you want to create a new uh, gene signature, you can check for instructions and populate uh, populate these fields. I have already done that, and you can choose file. Click and choose file. You can upload file with the gene um, signature. So this is the gene signature list that I created and it's already uploaded uh, in Transmart. Actually, let's check this gene signature list, how it looks in, in the Transmart. Here it is. So metadata can be, uh, uh, there are optional fields and there are mandatory fields, only mandatory fields are, are populated here. And there is a gene uh, signature items. You can visualize them before you run analysis. So let's run hierarchical clustering with gene signature list. So I'm going to drop whole data set on subset one, select hierarchical clustering. So I'm analyzing RNA-seq data now. So I'm going to select all high dimensional nodes. And instead of gene or pathway, uh, I'm going to select gene signature name, GSE. This is the one. Apply selections. And I'm going to choose clustering for rows and click run. So here is the result of this clustering. And again, we can compare results of this clustering with the um, with the published results in the paper. So if we spend some time analyzing the results, uh, 
we, we can find that uh, uh, results of the clustering in TransMart is uh, again almost identical to one in the in the paper. So that's how we can um, we can check uh, the uh, data from the from the article and in TransMart. So, so the uh, final conclusion of this uh, case study is that uh, is about role of MIR 503 and ZNF 217 in cellular proliferation. Um, so the induction of MIR 503 in response to estrogen stimulation has anti-proliferative effects, uh, likely if there is a repression of two genes, CCND1 and CCNF217. And combined with the information that MIR 503 is a down-regulated in human cancers, this results indicate that MIR 503 represents presents a new candidate um, therapeutic options for the treatment of breast cancer. So now I'm going to uh, talk about loading of VCF data in TransMart. So uh, TransMart uh, has a plugin has connected to BioDalian's genomic browser and it was presented in 2014, a release, a Transmart release of a version 1.2. And this genomic browser allows to visualize genomic data and as well as compare genomic data between patient cohorts. So to load data, VCF data in TransMart, uh, you need to prepare a file, a VCF file. So VCF format usually have uh, meta info lines uh, separated from other information with these two hashtags, a header line, chromosome, position, ID, reference, uh, uh, quality, filter, info, format, etc. And the data lines. The lines are underneath the header line. It's information about position in genome, genotype information. So different um, NGS pipelines create VCF files with format that deviate from canonical. Um, and in this case, uh, VCF uh, become not readable or not loadable in TransMart. So therefore, you need to make sure that your VCF file is in proper format for loading in TransMart. So uh, what are the uh, requirements for that? So column number one, chromosome, should should contain only numeric values. Sometimes it contains a chrome, chromosome, so there should be no any letters in the first column. And first three columns, chromosome, position, and SNP ID, the combination of this information must be unique. So there should be not be any duplicates uh, in this combination. Otherwise, uh, you cannot load this uh, VCF file in TransMart. So let's go and check uh, VCF files in TransMart. So here is the sample data. Um, MSY01, it's a demo, um, demo study for VCF data. So be, be, before I'm going to start demonstration with Genome Browser, uh, 
I'm going to do reset. Just it's a good uh, to do reset before you run any analysis. Make sure that all uh, initial information, uh, genomic information, is erased before you started um, your study check. So um, you can you can wrap whole study on the subset one, or you can separate. Uh, you study into two cohorts, for example, into diseased and healthy population, and then uh, run genome browser. I'm going to do that. You go into genome browser, and then drag and drop high dimensional node, say agree. And you can see that all information is split into two cohorts. Then you can navigate in this browser. Say you can determine particular chromosome, particular region, or you can just move it, but it take, of course, too much time. Or you can um, enter gene that you would like to check. And genome browser will bring you to that particular region of this gene. So again, you can zoom in and zoom out. And you can compare two data sets, diseased and um, healthy population, what kind of SNPs you can find. And the SNPs are shown with this uh, little crosses. And if you click on this cross, you can see information. Um, this uh, labels show indels and again information about that. So if you, I hope if you see, you can see these little bars over here. It's quality of depth information, uh, minor allele frequency information. And if you would like to see better, you can click on this button and you can adjust height of this uh, of these bars and they become visible if they were invisible before so you can increase sensitivity of our uh, genome browser and you can see information again clicking on each bar you, you will see information about quality of depth and uh, any other parameter you want to see. So I'm open to discussion. Let's discuss that you just, uh, uh, you just seen. Any, any other questions, suggestions? Yeah, if anybody has a question, if you uh, raise your hand, I can actually unmute you and you can just uh, ask it verbally. Um, Paul is asking, can you share which ETL tool you used for loading the VCF data? Uh, I was using uh, the same loader, TM data loader. And again, I'm, uh, I recommend you to go to the wiki page. Um, this link will bring you to this uh, uh, wiki page and you, you will see what kind of um, uh, types of data supported by TM data loader. And there is also sample data. And you can use it. Um, so I also noticed that uh, some deposited versions of TM data loader may not work so if if one didn't work try another one yeah but it usually works very well anyone else have a question or a comment <clears throat> no i don't see anything julia so okay 
Well, I guess we'll uh, end it here then. Um, thank you very much, Yoya. Uh, the um, again, the this has been recorded, and so the recording will be made available, and you know maybe later today, but maybe in another day or two, uh, we'll also get the slides posted with it, and these can be found at the trans the IQB2 Transmart website under our training program. Uh, it also will appear on our YouTube channel. So uh, thanks again for your attention. Please pass on to your colleagues uh, if they have interest. Uh, they can watch the uh, this training or others, and um, hopefully you'll attend another training class in the future. Thanks, Julia, and thanks, everybody, for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.